The next string operator we are going to look at is concatenation. So we're going to take string 1 and string 2 and join them together. So we take string 1 which has an H and a space and then string 2 which has an E and then we concatenate it into string 3 so that string 3 will have an H, a space, an E and then the null operator. So we push string 1, 2 and 3 onto the stack and then we jump to the subroutine. We go to the subroutine, it runs through the subroutine, it does the concatenation and saves the value in string 3 and that's it finished. So let's look at the actual subroutine. We do our housekeeping here, we pop the return address, we pop the string 3, 2 and 1 into registers um, 3, 2 and 1 and now we're ready to go through the loop. So we work through the top loop here for string 1 and then we work through the bottom loop here for string 2. So in string 1 we load the value into register R0. So in this instance, instance we load the H into register R0. We compare the value to the null operator 0. Now if it was the null operator then it will jump to loop 2. So we'll go to loop 2 here and it'll, again we will go through the process of loading the string 2. But if the string 2 is a null operator as well it means we've got two null operators. So in effect two empty strings. If we have two empty strings we then jump to the return. So we go to the return here and even though we've got two empty strings we still need to have a null operator in that string. So this puts the null operator in and then we finish off our housekeeping and return back to the calling function. Now if we were up here and we didn't have null operators in both of the strings and we have as we have here a letter H then it's going to store that letter in the memory location defined in register R3. So it's going to take the H and put it into string 3. And then it's going to come down and increment R1 and R3. So it increments it, meaning it moves over to the next character, which in this case is a space. And it also increments R3. So this is the next location in string 3 where we're going to save the space value. And then we jump back to the beginning of loop 1 and we go and we get the next character and it will continue doing this until eventually it comes across the null operator. So when it comes across the null operator it can then jump onto string 2. So this is the beginning of string 2 and we go through the same process. We load the value of string 2 into the string 3 so the E now goes into string 3 and we do the comparison and if the null operator isn't there it continues down through the loop and inc increments R2 and R3 and then goes on to the next value within string 2 and it'll continue doing that until it hits the null operator in string 2. So when it's hit the null operator in string 2 it's going to jump to return and it jumps to the return here and again it still has to add in the null operator at the end and this here adds that null operator and then we finish off our housekeeping and we jump to the return address. We go up here to the return address here and then we end the code. So that's how the program works. Let's see it actually working within our machine. So I have loaded all of the code into the CPU, ROM and RAM. Now there's one thing that we want to do before we start and that is we don't know that the null operator has actually been added in at the end because it's all zeros anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to force it so that the position for the null operator, which is this position here in this instance, has actually got a value in it. Now what's going to happen is once we run through the code that position will actually be the position of the null operator so it will be overwritten by 0000. 
So I'll close that and then I will run the code. And it shouldn't take too long to run. We should be able to see the values coming through and register R0 any second. So there's 48 and that's the space and that's the E and that's the finished. Okay, so let's stop this. Now, if this has worked out right, then if we look at here, we've got the H, which is 48, and the E, which is the space, which is a 20, and then we've got the null operator. So that's string 1. We've got the 65, and then the null operator, that's string 2. And now the concatenated string is going to join these three together. So we're going to have the 48, which is the H, the 20, which is the space, and the 65, which is the E. And you can see here that the 1111 has been overwritten. So it's been overwritten by the null operator. So this works fine. And that's how we do our concatenation in our assembly language. So let's move on and we will look at some more string functions. Thank you.